Merry Christmas, everyone. It's a beautiful night out there, snowy and wintry, and I hope everyone is safe and warm. Merry Christmas and welcome to worship with St. John's Episcopal Church. Our service begins with the ringing of the bell and I invite you uh, at this time, if you have not already done so, to bring with you your bread and your wine that have been consecrated for our Christmas communion later in the service. Alleluia, unto us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia.
made flesh and dwelt among us. Full of grace and truth. Alleluia. with you and also with you let us pray eternal god you have made this holy night to shine with the brightness of the one true light bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. 
for all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of, the, of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. From the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope 
and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you now to stand for the reading of the Christmas gospel, if you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them 
and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the Word made flesh, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. You who have lived in a land of deep darkness, on you light has shined. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not conquer it. And also, O oh little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in these dark streets shineth the everlasting light the hopes and fears of all our years are met in thee tonight. The prophet Isaiah, the gospel writer John, and even the beloved carols that we sing acknowledge the darkness. And yet on this holy night, on this dark but dazzling night, a light shines. On this dark but dazzling night, a light shines from up out of the darkness. In whatever darkness we dwell, and the darkness will not overcome it. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas, all you people of St. John's and Johnson City and all friends and family and visitors. Merry Christmas, world. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all peoples. To you is born this night a child who is our Savior. And he is the light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness will never conquer. On this dark but dazzling night, Mary is heavy with child. And she and Joseph may still be looking for shelter and a warm place for the baby to be born. So on this dark night in Tennessee, I will leave the door of my house unlocked and unlatched. And though it is cold, I will leave my door open ajar just a bit. This is a Christmas Eve custom in some families and in some parts of the world to put a candle or a lamp in the window burning throughout the night 
and to leave the door of one's house unlocked, unlatched, and open. So that if Mary and Joseph are still wandering the dark streets, looking for shelter and a warm place for the baby to be born, these will be a sign of welcome to them. For to you is born this night a child. And all we need do is unlatch the door of our house and let it stand open on this night as a sign of welcome. An Episcopal colleague, Kate Moorhead, once worked for an adoption agency. And as part of her work at that time, she visited a Russian orphanage. I have never forgotten that day, she said. The woman who was leading me through the orphanage walked me into a room that was filled with babies. Most of these babies were nearly silent or just mewing or moaning softly in their cribs and rocking themselves. I asked the woman why they were so quiet. And she said, the babies stop crying when they realize that no one is coming. They have to learn to comfort themselves. But one little baby in the corner started crying hard. And Kate went and picked her up. And the little girl stopped crying immediately and smiled a very watery smile. And I asked the woman to tell me about this child. The woman said she was found in a garbage dumpster just two days ago. And she still thinks that someone might come if she cries. To you is born this night a child who is our savior, the child who forever trusts that when he cries, someone will come and welcome him. And she gave birth to her firstborn son. And because she was far from home and had no women from her family or midwives to attend to her, Mary wrapped Jesus in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger. And then that baby cried. And when he cried, he cried because he was hungry. And he cried because he was cold. And he cried because he needed comfort. And he cried because he needed to be held. The child, Jesus, needed milk and love and welcome like any other human child. Such is the devastating humility with which our God enters the world. Love made flesh. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For to you is born this night a child who is our savior. And when that baby's cry rings out in the darkness, a bright flight of angels wings over the dark fields to shine over the shepherds and over us. This is the light that shines in the darkness. Every year at Christmas time, I listen to a series called Winter Songs, in which writers and artists and ordinary folk are asked to share a song that evokes the winter season and a story that goes along with it. And my favorite episode in this series is an interview with Bill T. Jones, 
a dancer and choreographer whom I love. And he chose a Schubert song, Winter Reise, Winter Journey, about a solitary traveler in a savage landscape whose heart is frozen with grief. The song takes me back, said Bill T. Jones, to a winter day when I was in the fourth grade and sitting in a classroom in my school out at the edge of town. I should have been paying attention to the teacher, but I was daydreaming, looking out the window at the snow-covered highway, which was yards and yards away from my window. And then I saw a lone figure walking across that bleak landscape on a very, very cold and bitter day. And you know how it is when the wind blows and you have to turn your back against the wind? That's how this lone figure was walking. And I felt so sorry for this person hunched over like that his back hunched against the cold and bitter wind. And then I realized that this person was my father. My father, who was out of work, who had once been a contractor and owned his own business, but that business had failed and he had come to the chilly north to be with his family. And now he was broke and sick, and he had to get to this very insignificant job in a factory, miles and miles away. A black man with no car, trying to hitchhike on the highway, and no one will pick him up, and he has to walk the 10 miles to the factory. And I'm in a warm classroom getting an education and not paying attention even. And one of the reasons I was in school was so that I didn't have to be out there with him like that. And I was torn between these two worlds. I wanted to call out and go out to my father and bring him inside, and I didn't. And I wanted to tell everyone, look, there's my father but I didn't want to call out. Look, there's my father, impoverished and freezing by the side of the road. But I love him so much for getting out there that day. I love him so much for being out there, not talking about it, not complaining, just facing it alone. And this memory has, has gained a greater weight over the years as I have gotten older. As my body has gotten older, I understand my father more now, both inside and out. And the interviewer asked him, did you ever tell your father that you had seen him that day? And he said, no, I never did tell him that I saw him and how much I love him for that day. Should I have? I wonder, but I never did. And I listen to this winter story every year, not just because I love Bill T. Jones, but for that moment when he feels sorry for that person out there in the bleak landscape with his back hunched against the wind. That moment when he recognizes that person is his father and how much he loves him for being out there. That his father is out there freezing and exposed for love of him. In the hunched angle of his father's back is the sweetest angle of love in the flesh. And 
his father's feet trudging in the snow are telling the good news of love in the flesh. I love him so much for being out there that day. On this night, this actually very wintry night, unto us a child is born, a poor child lying in a feeding trough. And we might feel sorry for this poor child. And then we realize that he is ours out there in an often brutal landscape born here for us. He enters in by the sweetest angle of love. Love in the flesh with devastating humility. Emmanuel, God with us. And now the world is lit by a different light that shines in the darkness and the darkness will never conquer it. And who would not love him, loving us so dearly? I love him so much for being out there that day. I am so glad to be with you on this dark but dazzling night when the whole world is heavy with child. So glad to be with you. Though being with each other is different right now, the meaning of with is never lost and never conquered. Emmanuel, God with us. God's love shining, shining up out of the darkness. That is what we celebrate tonight. And as we celebrate communion tonight, know that in this vivid way, Jesus has come under our roof and into our home, and we welcome him. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, in this most holy night, your son, our savior was born in human flesh. Renew your church as the body of Christ. 
Holy God, hear our prayer. In this most holy night, there was no room for your son in the inn. Protect with your love those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this most holy night, Mary, in the pain of labor, brought your son to birth. Hold in your hand all who are in pain or distress. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this most holy night, your Christ came as the light shining in the darkness. Bring comfort to all who suffer sadness in the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this night, the angels sing peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in all the world. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, shepherds in the field hurt, hunt good tidings with joy. Give us grace to preach the good gospel of Christ's redemption. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, strangers have found the holy family and saw the baby lying in a manger. Bless our homes and all whom we love. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, heaven is come down to earth and earth is raised to heaven. Hold in your hand all those who have passed through death in the hope of your coming kingdom. Holy God, hear our prayer. On this holy night, Christians in the world celebrate Christ's birth. Open our hearts that he may be born in us today. Holy God, hear our prayer. In this holy night, angels and shepherds worshiped at the manger throne. Receive the worship we offer in fellowship with Mary, Joseph, and the saints through him who is your word made flesh, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. On this holy night, we raise our voices with the, those on our prayer list for Kitty, for Shirley, for Alice, Devereaux, Elaine, Linda, Sophie, Tim and Beth, Evelyn, Ed and Charlene, Carolyn, Becky, Peg, Harry, Jennifer, Bonnie, Eble Yume, Bill, Rick, and Larry. I invite your intercessions that you may share aloud or you may enter into chat. We pray for all who are isolated or alone and lonely. On this night, we pray for all those suffering from COVID and for the doctors and nurses who care for them. For Skylar, Sandra, Tanya, for Carolee, O Lord, our God, accept these fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. On this holy night, the angels sang, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all whom, in whom God delights. I invite you now to share God's peace with each other. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.
Ann and Van, Kathy, Mark and Nick, peace be with you. During the singing of the hymn, I invite you to prepare your holy table at home for Christmas communion. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. you embraced our poverty by your spirit may we share in your riches amen and now we give you thanks because in coming to dwell among us as human you revealed the radiance of your glory and brought out of darkness into your own marvelous light amen Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. in the presence of God among us. Let us pray 
with confidence as our Savior Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us the trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts and the gifts you have in your home. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us now partake of communion together. salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, 
that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. We thank you now to light your candle. Mm -hmm. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day, this night, and remain with you always. Amen.
go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Merry Christmas and joy and peace to all of you. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Be safe. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I'm not blowing my candle out because it's still Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.